Good evening, everyone. Today is the uh, 5th of January, 2020. The evening of, it's a little bit after 5 here in Pineville. And um, we're going to continue to worship God by singing some hymns and psalms and spiritual songs and making melody in our heart to God. And if we lose you, you can always check back in because if I go down, I always just start over again. So hopefully we can keep this down to two videos tonight. So I'm on, it seems like when I turn the camera around is when I have my challenge. So anyway, we'll try it. I'll try to leave it back up here a little bit more tonight. And you're going to tell me if it goes down, right, Mark? Yeah. Okay, the first selection. I didn't have. Uh, this first selection. No. Oh, you're going to do your scripture. Okay. okay. Do All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm back at 3, 13 through 18. Thou one is for the salvation of thy people, even for salvation. Mm -hmm. Thine anointed, thou wounded the head out of the house of the wicked. By discovering the foundation of the neck, Selah. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of the villages. They came out as a whirlwind that scattered me. The rejoicing was as the devour of the poor secretly. Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses to a heap of great waters. When I heard my belly tremble, my lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered to my bones, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up and up, un, up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. Although the fig trees shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of all shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no, no there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Thank you. Okay. Are we still hooked up? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. The first one we're going to sing is um, 470. Now, this says when his body was broken for me. It doesn't say when his bones were broken for me. I always like to let people know because not one of his bones was broken. Okay? The scripture might be fulfilled. So I want to make sure I'm not advocating something that scripture isn't advocating when I sing this. Looking back through the years, I can see my dear Lord. As they nailed him that day to the tree, for the love that he bore me, his lifeblood he bore, when his body was broken for me. Oh, love beyond human expression, compassion so boundless and free. Jesus proved his great wealth of affection when his body was broken for me. For my sins and transgressions, the dear Savior died on the cross, died in great agony, nails through hands and through feet and the spear through his side. When his body was broken for me, yes, forever and ever his great love was proved. When he suffered on the dark Calvary, and the curse of the law was forever removed. When his body was broken for me. Oh, love beyond human expression, compassion so boundless and free. Jesus proved his great wealth of affection when his body was broken for me. Well...
307. Thy way, not mine, O Lord. Have you, do you ever hear the saying? I know my dad used to say all the time, you know, it's always going to be something. Mm. It's always going to be something. Well, that's true. It's always going to be something as long as we're down here on this fallen world, this fallen world. But if we believe that God's in control, if we believe that he works all things after the counsel of his own will. If we believe that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose, then it gives us a little bit different idea about things. Thy way, not mine, O Lord, however dark it be, O lead me by thine own right hand, choose thou the path for me. Let it be your rough, it still will be the best. Why need or stress it matters not red things here me to the rest. That's fine, it's just showing oh, that it's live. Oh, yeah, I didn't know. I'm sorry. I dare not choose my lot. I would not if I might. But choose thou for me, O my Lord, so shall I walk aright. The kingdom that I seek is thine, so let the way that leads to it, O Lord, be thine, else I must surely stray. Not mine, not mine the choice. If things be great or small, be thou my guide, my guard, my strength, my wisdom, and my all. Well, I'm going to go to the other part of our broadcast because or we might sing. Hello, Howard Jet. <laughs> Good to see you tonight. <clears throat> Here a while back. Some of you know that I have some rental property, several rental properties. And <clears throat> this one morning, at that time, that, that man is no longer with us, but because his mother died and had a massive heart attack, and so he couldn't handle it very well, and he went back to live with his father back in Indiana. But one morning, real early in the morning, it was probably 5.30 in the morning, I got a phone call. And I knew he wouldn't be calling me at 5.30 in the morning if it wasn't a major challenge. And um, so I called him up, and he was really upset. And he said, such and such rental burnt to the ground last night. <laughs> Praise the Lord, it was, it was vacant at the time. But anyway, it burnt to the ground. And I believe someone burned it to the ground. I have pretty strong evidence, and I think I know who it is. But, you know, the point is, is that, you know what I, you know what I told my manager? I said, well, that's one less property we have to worry about renting, isn't it? <laughs> And he was really God. He says, is that all you have to say? I said, look, I can't bring the property back. You know, you know, you know the old saying, don't cry over spilt milk, right? <laughs> so, you know, sometimes we look at these things and we ask, well, now why would God cause that property to burn to the ground? Because I don't actually, you know, there may have been someone, uh, there was probably someone that started the fire, but the point is they would have never been able to start the fire if God didn't want it burnt to the ground. <laughs> okay? I really believe that when Scripture says he works all things, 
after the counsel of his own will, it means all things. It's not so easy to say when it's something bad that happens. It's easy to say when something good is going on. But the God on the mountain is the same God in the valley. So the next song we're going to sing, uh, do you have a selection, Rosette? I've lost my little slip of paper somewhere. Anyway. <laughs> Here it is. I got it. Um, do we have another selection? Uh, 232 Babylon has fallen. Babylon has fallen. 232 Babylon, huh? What is Babylon? <laughs> what is Babylon? Um, well, Babylon is anything that is not a part of the church of God. Antichrist. The Roman Catholic Church, free will churches, Zionist churches, they're all part of Babylon. <clears throat> Hail the day so long expected. Hail the year of full release. Zion's walls are now erected, and her watchmen publish peace. Through our silos, wide dominion, hear the trumpet loudly roar. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, is fallen. Babylon is fallen to rise no more. All her merchants stand with wonder. What is this that comes to pass? Murmuring like a distant thunder, crying, oh, alas, alas, swell the sound, ye kings and nobles, priests and people, rich and poor. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, is fallen, Babylon is fallen to rise no more. Blow the trumpet in Mount Zion, Christ shall come the second time. Really with a rod of iron, all who now as foes combine. Babel's garments we rejected, and our fellowship is o'er. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, is fallen. Babylon is fallen to rise no more. Okay, well. We're going to sing a psalm here. We're going to sing a psalm. 37B out of the Psalter. 37B. Page 95. Rest in the Lord, wait patiently. Fred, not for anyone who prospers in his wicked way, completing schemes begun. Cease being thou by angry sir, make thou of wrath and end. Fred, not thyself for fretting to evil doing tend. For evil the pursuit shall be cut off no more to stand. But those who wait upon the Lord inherit shall the land. For yet a little while and then 
the wicked shall not be. His place thou shalt consider well, but him thou shalt not see. The meek and humble of the land, inheritor shall be, and they shall live thee like himself in abundance of peace. The wicked plots against the just and grinds his teeth in wrath. Because he sees his day will come, the Lord at him shall laugh. The wicked men have drawn their swords and bent their bows to slay, to cast the needy down and kill the men of the bright way. But yet the sword where they have drawn shall enter their own heart. Their bows which they are bending shall in broken pieces are. Well, we're going to sing one out of the Gatsby hymnal before we go to the other part of our, our service. And... Uh, Let's sing. Do you have on page 10 and it's 73, the number 73, it's called Electing Grace. Do you have that in yours? Um, page 10. Page. I don't think I have page 10. Look at 73 on the... Okay, I'll try to hurry on. Did you have it, was that? Can you help me find it? Yeah, I have it. I okay. Have it. Jesus, we bless thy Father's name. Thy God and ours are both the same. What heavenly blessings from his throne flow down to sinners through his Son. Christ, he my first elect, he said, then shows our souls in Christ our head. Before he gave the mountains birth, or laid foundations for the earth, Thus did eternal love begin to raise us up from death and sin. Our characters were then decreed, blameless in love of the holy seed, predestinated to be sons. Born by degrees, but chose at once to regenerate race to praise the glory of His grace. With Christ our Lord, we share our part in the affections of His heart. Nor shall our souls be thence removed till he forgets his first beloved. Well, <clears throat> Howard, it looks like so far we're kind of by ourselves tonight. <laughs> I guess everybody went to their brick and mortar churches tonight which is understandable um 
I am not going to be broadcasting on YouTube live because we have a weak signal, but it will be put over on YouTube a little bit later this evening. Tonight, I think what I'll do is look at a passage Um, there's a lot of people that, you know, want to know, well, how come you spend so much time in the New Testament? How come you don't spend more time in the Old Testament? And also, a lot of people say, how come you spend so much time in the Gospels uh, and the Epistles, <laughs> you know, of uh, Paul? Well, because... I believe that the Gospels and the Epistles of Paul are paramount to the proclamation of the Gospel, I believe. Um, one of the things that I um, want to say is that... Um, there's a lot of teachings about the Bible. There's a lot of teachings. And a lot of it is good. There's a lot of teachings about creation. And there's a lot of teachings about um, a lot of things. <laughs> Biblical cosmology, it's all good. Uh, a lot of teaching about eschatology. Um, but there's nothing more important than the proclamation that Jesus came in the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. It's not just my opinion. <laughs> that was what the Apostle Paul said. So I think I'm in good stead. Well, look at what the seventh chapter of Mark has to say. Um, I think there's some good uh, teaching here. I think there's some real good teaching here. Um, if Jesus, if we cannot depend on the teachings of Christ, then we can't depend on the teachings of anyone. Isn't that true? We're going to begin in um, verse 5. Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? How many times have I been accused of doing that? Not, not, not washing my hands, but not walking according to the tradition of the elders. You know, we don't have a steeple on our little church uh, fellowship building here <laughs> okay we don't have a sign on our fellowship building because I don't broadcast that we are worshiping here it's none of anyone's business other than the ones that are worshiping here okay we're not uh, we're not a state church <laughs> we're not a community church okay we're a house church Why walk not thy disciples according to the traditions of the elders? Who ordained you, Larry Phillips? <laughs> what cemetery did you attend, Larry Phillips? Who baptized you, Larry Phillips? I was baptized, immersed by an elder in the Primitive Baptist Church, so, so everyone knows. And I was ordained as a deacon, <laughs> okay? Why walk not thy disciples according to the traditions of the elders? He answered and said to them, Well hath as Isaiah the prophet prophesied of you hypocrites. As, as it is written, this people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Have you ever experienced that? 
where people honor the Lord with their lips, but their heart is far from them. They're quick to disassemble with people. If they don't give enough money to them, they don't mind taking their, your money, do they? They don't mind taking your money. By the way, I don't want anybody's money. Don't send me any money. How many, how many fellowships have ever, how many fellowships have ever told you that? Don't send me any money. <laughs> I don't want your money. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines? The commandments of men that's what we're talking about that's the difference between the gospel and the commandments of men okay well you know we don't have a quorum here uh, we don't have a clerk so we can't have a proper business meeting um, We didn't, we didn't vote over the color of our carpet. We need to vote on that. <laughs> well, um, hold on just a second. Never ceases to amaze me when we get ready to have a service. All of the interruptions. Satan doesn't like it when you're proclaiming the truth. Have you ever noticed that? How be it, verse 7, how be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men? For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the traditions of men, as the washing of pots and cups and many other <laughs> such like things ye do. We were attending a primitive Baptist church one time, and the minister's wife came to my wife, and gave her a re recipe of how to properly bake the unleavened bread for communion. That's what we're talking about here. You know, does it really matter <laughs> what you put in the bread that you, you know, And they had to have, make sure they had a certain kind of wine for their communion service, too, didn't they? Laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. He could have gone on and on and on and on. You have to consult the minister of music before you decide what you're going to sing. And he said to them, Full well you reject the commandments of God that you may keep your own tradition. We all have our traditions, don't we? Sing three songs, say a prayer, and... Have your homily, <laughs> have your outline, have your structure. Don't break with the structure. Don't break with the tradition. Don't do it. It'll cause everybody to get upset. He said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother. And whosoever curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corban, that is to say, a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, you shall be free. It was all about money, the Pharisees. It was all about money. And the scribes, maintaining that control. Verse 13, making the word of God of none effect through your traditions. That's what a lot of these churches are doing. They're making the word of God of none effect. They're not teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're not proclaiming that Jesus Christ came, in the center, came into this 
um, world to save sinners. He came to save his people from their sins. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and by his stripes we are healed. I don't care what kind of ingredients are in your leavened bread for your uh, communion service. I don't care what kind of wine you drink for your communion service. I don't care what kind of clothes you wear. I don't care what kind of necktie you have. I don't care whether you have a suit on or not. These are traditions of men. I was in a church here a while back, and the pastor said, you know, why is it people don't wear neckties anymore? You know, I don't have to dress up for God. My flannel red and black shirt's just fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> Verse 14, and when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand there's nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him, but the things which come out of him, these are they that defile him. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Well, He says in verse 21, For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. He's preaching total depravity there, isn't he? He's preaching total depravity. Well, you know, <clears throat> that's really what I had on my mind tonight, is let us not get all wrapped up in the traditions of men. Let us stay with the gospel. Let us stay fixed on um, the truth of the gospel. And, you know, a lot of people want to say the gospel is something other than the death, the burial, and the resurrection and the imminent return of Jesus Christ and that he came to save his people from their sins. That's good news to me. It's good news to me, and I hope it's good news to you. You know, and people say, well, I get tired of you talking about the same thing all the time. I'm not going to apologize <laughs> for telling you the truth, you know. Have you ever thought about why you were here? Was it just fate? Have you ever wished you'd never been born? And then this present life you've grown to hate? I had someone recently tell me they, they were going to take their own life. The person said she was tired of all this strife. Life can be a bitter pill and can cut you like a knife. There is an answer for sinners in God's holy word. When you suggest this to some, they think it absurd. They might say, this would never work for me to see what God should say in light of eternity. Only God can reveal himself to lost souls. He does their destiny, their future control. I told this angry person who threatened to take her own life that she could only do it if God had ordained this plight. You know... We proclaim that Jesus came in the world to save sinners. What does secular education proclaim? <laughs> secular education denies that we're born and conceived in sin. What do they call it in psychological terms? The blank slate theory, right? The blank slate theory is a great big lie which denies original sin. Man has never had a blank slate. He was a sinner born and conceived in sin. Adam brought the curse of sin upon all mankind. The blank slate theory is a theory of the blind leading the blind. 
When one denies the fall and the curse that we are dead in our trespasses and sin, that it automatically follows for them, there's no need to be born again. But Christ came against the blank slate theory when he said to the weak and weary, Come unto me, all ye that are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. No man is born into this world with a blank slate. We are full of sin, full of rage and hate, and unless we are born again, we will remain in this state. We should be crying out to God daily for mercy and grace, realizing we're living amongst those who are full of rage and hate. What evil abounds in the souls of men? We cry out for mercy and grace for God to protect us from all this sin. Have mercy on me, O God, my Savior, should be our daily cry. Let not the evil one overtake one such as I. Daily mercy and grace God's children need each day until the evil one is taken out of the way. Well, Joshua West, welcome aboard. Glad you could join us. Jesus Christ is our righteousness. Jesus Christ is our perfect sacrifice. He's our substitutionary atonement. He, he, was, he was our sin bearer. He took our sins upon himself. He is the perfect sacrifice for sin. That's what I'm proclaiming tonight, not the traditions of men. Let it be understood exactly what I am. I'm a sinner saved by grace, just like the apostle said. I'm a despicable, vile creature who was raised up from the dead. I deserve the wrath of God, but it was placed on Christ instead. When I think of how vile and wretched this poor sinner really is, it gives me pause to wonder how awesome Christ forgives. To suffer, bleed, and die on a cruel, rugged tree and cry out while he was dying to forgive a sinner like me? What a marvelous act of mercy and kindness he did to me show when I deserve to be cast into hell there forever go. All my praise and worship should sing forth for eternity for Christ bleeding and dying to save a wretched sinner like me. I'm not interested in the traditions of men. I'm not interested in making sure that the right ingredients are in the leavened bread for communion or the that we have exactly the right kind of wine or that we have silver utensils to put the wine and the bread in. I'm not, I'm not interested in any of that. I'm interested in one thing and one thing alone. Jesus Christ came in the world to save sinners. Amen. May the good Lord be with you tonight. It's my prayer. God bless.